Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is theCUBE, Silicon Angle's continuous production. We're here live at MongoDB Days in New York City at the Marriott Marquis. We're talking about Mongo, its innovations, the developer community. We've got a number of practitioners on. Rackspace is here. Rackspace made a big announcement today with Mongo, providing Mongo as a service. Uh, the first enterprise grade Mongo, we're going we're gonna to unpack that and, and talk to the folks at Rackspace about that. Uh, Kenny Gorman is here, as well as Chris Lalonde. These guys are both co-founders of a company called Object Rocket, which was acquired uh, by Rackspace. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Thanks. So Thanks. let's start with Object Rocket. We love the <laughs> entrepreneur stories. and So take us back to the early days of Object Rocket. What was that all about? You guys are co-founders, and uh, tell us a little bit about sort of that startup and, and how you grew and how you, you know, made the exit. Yeah, um, uh, super exciting. I mean, Kenny and I have known each other for better than a decade, so we've always uh, hung out and stuff, and we, uh, you know, at the beginning of it, we really recognized the need for uh, a, a premium database as a service in the cloud. Um, and so we were talking one day, and, and uh, we decided that we were going to go do it. That was really the sort of the, the starting of Object Rocket. We started it uh, early in 2012, and uh, about a year later, we got uh, acquired by Rackspace. It was, uh, it was quite the year. That's, that's <laughs> awesome. So, uh, yeah, so what was that like? How, <laughs> who, how'd you get funded? You know, how many people did you have when you sold to Rackspace? What was that all about? So we went through a round of funding, the friends and family round. Yep. Um, we were able to tap into our network of folks that we had worked with previously. And they really saw that the project that we were working on was super compelling. And we thought we could bring to the table a new level of experience for MongoDB <laughs> users. Uh, and so you know, we worked with them to get a round of funding. It was just three of us for the longest time, some contractors and some help. Um, and we, we just got it done. We cranked it, we were racking, stacking, writing code, <laughs> doing it all, so. A lot of late nights. Yeah. Um, talk about databases as a service. We are talking to you know, Oracle the other day and they were telling us how they're doing databases as a service. What's the difference between a database as a service that a startup does versus say sort of sure. a traditional software right. company? Sure, I, you know, I, I can answer. So, yeah. You know, I think you know, a, lot, a lot of folks out there are looking to kind of forget about infrastructure. They want to develop compelling applications, mm. they want to have a quick time to market, uh, and they don't really want to worry about all the intricacies of a database and you know, cache partitioning and networking, all the stuff that comes along with running a database. And so Object Rocket uh, you know, is a true database as a service, right? So what we're trying to do is provide an interface that's a higher order than maybe most other database hosters. And uh, so that's, that's, what, that's why we built Object Rocket. All right, now you guys made an announcement today, uh, just hit the wire. Yeah. Uh, Rackspace and TenGen team up to deliver first cloud platform engineered for MongoDB solutions. Now there are other clouds that are you know, running MongoDB. Yeah. So specifically what you guys announced and what's different about it? Well, today we're announcing a partnership with TenGen. Um, they're the MongoDB company. Yep. Uh, you know, I think the combination of TenGen's expertise with Mongo and our ability to you know, deploy, develop, and, and scale Mongo um, uh, is super powerful for customers. It lets people go from literally a small one gig instance up to terabytes of data on, all without seamlessly, you know, without having to do anything. Mm. Um, it's kind of a fire and forget, and you can just scale. So talk about, uh, I mean, you can't talk cloud without talking about Amazon. They're kind sure. of, a, they're the gorilla and at the same time, they're the disruptor. So, sure. yep. so how do you guys differentiate? I mean, when you were a startup, were you using Amazon? Were you using Rackspace? Uh, we, we, we weren't. I mean, the key differentiator about Object Rocket, and one of the things that made, you know, one of the things that we really started fundamentally was that the, the, you, you can't take a regular cloud infrastructure and really scale a database on it, right? You wouldn't take, you wouldn't take a front-end web server at eBay, put Oracle on it, and expect that to run eBay's database. That just wouldn't scale for you, that wouldn't work, right? And so it's a similar principle. We have built our platform from the ground up. So we've gone and got our own data centers when we started, we racked computers, we specifically purposely built those computers, we've tweaked the operating system, we've tweaked the network interfaces, we've built all that stuff up to make us a system that's going to scale with you from literally a, a very small instance to scale all the way up seamlessly up to you know, terabytes, petabytes really of, of storage. Now why, you said Chris, it, could, it wouldn't scale. Why wouldn't it? Is this because of the cost? I mean, it would cost you a billion dollars to make it work? Is that the issue? It, it, it would. There's a yeah. bunch of challenges around scale that people don't normally understand, right? You not only have, like, think about it this way, right? It, think about eBay. Well, so let's step back to eBay, for example. eBay had years before they got to a million customers, right? They had years before they got to a million customers, and they still had scale problems early days, right? And they had scale problems, they had a lot of money, and so they could go buy engineers, and they could go buy a lot of hardware, and they could go buy all that expertise. Right. Now compare that to Instagram. 
how many weeks was it before Instagram had a million customers? Yeah. Yeah. So the scale problem has become super time compressed today and developers really need to focus on developing, right? And getting their, you know, getting their product built and not having to worry about that scale problem. And the, really the only way to do that is to sort of outsource your scale problem to a service. And that's the real differentiator for us, right? We're trying to not only deal with the hardware, growing all that hardware stuff, but also being the data, the DBA for those folks. So they just, they don't have to worry about it. That's, that's really the answer. Really. So how do you guys, um, how, how do you differentiate from, from Amazon? So Amazon, you know, today is a general compute platform. Let's just call it that, right? Uh, you can run anything you want on it, and it's easy to provision, and, and it's, you know, it's, it's fine. On our system, we're tailor-built, as Chris was talking, mm -hmm. tailor-built for MongoDB. So we've taken, we've paid attention to all the little details that make MongoDB so great. So we're not a virtualized environment. We use, you know, bare metal style approach. We, we scale easily, so the context of Mongo is inside our system. So if folks need to scale, they can click a button and add new shards, the MongoDB term for scaling new horizontally, new, new shards horizontally. So we provide those, those APIs and those hooks to scale MongoDB beyond what someone can do on a bare platform like, like something like Amazon. So, so you use bare metal, presumably because you just don't want a virtualization, so you don't want an abstraction layer in there. Correct. Slowing you down, That's right? right. So, I, I get, now I get love when I get practitioners on because you know you help me squint through sort of the some of the vendor marketing because when you sure. talk to the virtualization vendors they say oh no we can run our apps there's no degradation in performance you say how can that be you know? there is, and I think what they're saying is we can run you know generation n minus two compare that with what we can do today and there's yeah. no degradation in performance but apples to apples that's right an abstraction layer is going to be problematic from a performance standpoint that's why you choose to go we, bare metal is that we, correct premise? that is correct and we've, we've and we tried to focus on every bit of it right so our disk is all ssd so we're all solid state so the disk subsystem is state of the art our systems are state of the art right so we we try to make everything state of the art and give give mongo the best chance to have the best platform Right, and so so memory partition was part of that, CPU partition was part of that, bare metal speed was part of that, sharding was part of that, SSDs are part of that, et cetera. And so that also provides, talk about the security uh, elements and advantages sure, yeah. when you go to you know, non-virtualized, non-multi-tenant. Yeah, I, I can talk to that. So yeah, sure. you know, our system is, is security has been a, a key tenant of ours. Um, so in our system, when you provision instances, they're closed off by default. Users can go in and open an ACL to whatever you know, front end application service that they want to run. So that's, that's kind of one thing. The second thing is we're SSL enabled. So we terminate SSL on our side. Mm. Customers can use SSL clients to us and be fully secure. And lastly, all our transmissions to our slaves, to replicas, to any other component within our system is all over SSL. And that's just to make sure that security is really a top notch, a first level citizen in our, in our design and architecture. So you mentioned uh, you use SSD, we follow the stuff, the scale out, the whole SSD, you yeah. know, we're looking at, 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 at all kinds of innovations going on there, and the impact from an application development standpoint. I wonder if you could talk a little bit um, more about that, just in terms of how, uh, well, let me ask it this way. How does quality of service play in there? Um, now that you've got this you know, capability of a persistent you know, medium that's not spinning, mm -hmm. uh, can you begin to provision uh, not only capacity, but performance as well, and pin an application to that? Sure, absolutely. I mean, the, you know, the, the sort of two technologies, SSDs and the new cards coming out with folks like from Fusion IO or LSI, really are changing the, the game, right? Spinning disks are 1950s technology. Let's, let's be clear about it. And we haven't done anything with those since the 1950s. It's basically the same thing, made faster and stronger. So SSDs are really the, the future, and those, those flashcards are the future, next generation things to go. It's, it's, it's a fantastic technology. You can do exactly what you're saying. You can start doing things like carving out specific IOPS per customer and give them whatever they need. You, know, you can do it dynamically, right? You can be flexible with your IO subsystem, which is really the key component of this architecture, yeah. is the IO subsystem has to be super performant, and if you can dynamically allocate that stuff, it gives you the, the best combination, right? You can like scale your IO subsystem, not just the box anymore, right? So you're saying I can, through an API call, make a request for both 50 gigabytes of capacity and 1,000 IOPS, yep. and, and then change that on the fly. That's the idea, yeah, that's yeah. the idea. So we have, uh, we have our other co-founder, Eric Beebe, and his staff are, have become quite experts in SSDs. So uh, these guys are boy, boy geniuses, <laughs> and, and they are working on sort of this next generation of flash storage. Today we have you know, sort of a current generation, they're bringing in the next generation, so we're super excited about sort of the next level that we'll be able to take this game to. Yeah, so how about this notion of, of being able to actually 
you know, change the way in which you write applications. So things like putting the whole database into the into the flash system, or even doing things like atomic writes. I mean, yep. is, is that something sure. that you guys are playing around with, and and how does that affect? So you know, we're always concerned about data, you know, data preservation, data quality, and availability. Right. And so that's a key component with flash storage, is uh, things like you know, write amplification, uh, trim support and making sure that we're really using the best of breed components in these SSDs to make sure that we provide it the super available, super fast service. So, um, you know, that's part of what we provide. Customers don't even need to worry about it, right? They just go on our service. So you're architecting that. That's correct. Well, however you do it. Yep, that's well, what we believe database as a service is, right? right? All those things are under the covers. We take care of them. You don't need to worry about them. Right. Yeah, so, so really simplifying the developer's yeah. life so it, they can right. focus on writing algorithms or right. whatever it's, it's, it is they want to do. Yeah, it was like, know. you know, part of the, the foundation of the company was I was trying to write an application and I just got super, super frustrated with having to configure everything all the time. And I was like, why doesn't somebody just give me you know, a host name and a port that I can send my data to yeah. and get my data back out of? That's available all the time, and that will just scale with me. Like, there just wasn't that solution in the marketplace. Let's start a company. That, that, yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's, you know. <laughs> that's awesome. So how many, how many guys were you when you sold to Rackspace? Three. <laughs> so we were, we were three then, the three founders, and now we're seven, a team of seven of right. really great expert guys and we're continuing to grow. So we're hiring and we're, and we're, and we're, yeah, you we're, know, we're moving on. Who are you hiring? What type of people are you looking for? Um, it, it's really, um, it's actually generalists. Um, the reason is, is that generalists uh, have this uh, idea of being able to work in all these different areas because that's what we're doing, right? We're, we're, not just, uh, we're not just developing code. We're not just managing servers. We're not just dealing with hardware infrastructure. The people have to really understand how all those components fit together to make a, a really great platform for folks. So you guys live in DevOps. I mean, yep. that's your. That's right. Yeah. Okay, so you're looking for people who, who can, can, can. Python folks, Mongo folks, systems <laughs> engineering folks. Um, you know, any of the languages that Mongo supports, the driver Ruby, you know, Node guys, yep. you know, whatever, developers, we want developers and DevOps guys to come help and, and uh, build this out. Why Mongo? I mean, you had a lot of choices out there. Why, why'd you guys settle on I on can talk Mongo? about it. <laughs> so, so, you know, MongoDB's DB is an interesting beast. Uh, you know, my background's in Oracle, we're at eBay and PayPal, and, and, and even Postgres to some extent. Yeah. Um, but you know, when Mongo came around, it was such an interesting paradigm shift to go from a relational to a document-oriented storage. It was so easy to develop applications on Mongo, and so many of the popular use cases around uh, today's sort of you know, a collaborative and, and social uh, applications around like tagging and, and uh, photos and rich media, all that works really easily in Mongo. And so, like I was saying earlier, folks can develop applications and just not worry about the API they're using. They can just easily serialize their data to, a, to an API, they can retrieve and, and write that data in a very easy format. It matches a lot of today's OO programming models. It's just really a natural fit. So how about scale? People often sometimes you know, throw out a knockoff on Mongo. Oh, it's you know, scalability issues. What, I wonder if you guys could talk to that a little bit. They're probably doing it wrong. <laughs> what did you say again? They're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, add some color to that. I, you know, I think, I think uh, you know, MongoDB is a, a, a fantastic API to develop against. I think as you start to run it at scale, there's some challenges. And I think those challenges are around um, a lot of the things that we're working to solve, frankly. Uh, getting disk to memory ratios right, getting the proper speed of disk, understanding their, their, their profile of their queries, understanding their tuning of their queries, um, running things like componentry, like balancers and things in the background, and giving the right I.O. to those things. Those are all things that we have to take into consideration to scale Mongo. Yeah, I, go I, ahead. I'd add in is that I think that Mongo sometimes gets a bad rap because people have put it in the wrong platform. They, they did what I was talking about earlier. You don't take a web server and put a database on top of it and say, that's going to scale for me. Mm. That just isn't how, like, that, that doesn't work at scale. If you've worked in a, at a place that's had to deal with a lot of scale very quickly, you understand that a database has a very specific requirements in terms of CPU, I.O., yep. bandwidth, all of those things. And if, you're, if you just think you're going to go and you know, take, a, take any old instance off the cloud and throw a database, any database software, forget about Mongo, and that's, that just isn't going to work. Yeah. And that's, again, that's the key component of why we started the company. We built it from the scratch to do that. To be a great database yeah, yeah. platform. Yeah, you, well you guys come from that traditional RDBMS yeah, world, yeah, and yeah. so I, my, you, you see the changes going on. I mean, when Google had to index the web, it wasn't yeah. going to stuff a bunch of stuff in the God <laughs> yeah, box. Right. That, that wouldn't work, right? right? So, so when you look at the, the shift in the marketplace, I mean, what percent of the, the data sources out there actually need ACID and, and actually you know, need two-phase commits? That's right, and that's exactly right. Like that. No, you're, you're exactly right. You know, we've, as a, you know, humanity is just adding more and more data, and the fact of the matter is, is that it doesn't always need to be ACID compliant. There are very specific cases, and what's great, you know what, the real advantage that developers of today have is that they actually have now a suite of tools. 
right? Yeah. It's, it's not just Mongo, it's Memcache, it's a whole bunch of other no That's a key solutions. Point. That's a real good point. And, and that whole suite of tools allows them to develop different things for different you know, processes. Like, again, if you're at some major place, you're not just using one single data source, right? You're using a set of these tools and you apply them to the right place. Um, you have to be able to scale those things, but it is really that, and that's that's why this is like right now is a super exciting time in databases in general. It's just yeah. it's awesome. Now help me with this. With this, I'm going to come back to that too because it is a super time yeah, yeah. for databases. So help me uh, unpack some of the dissonance here because on the one hand we're just talking about you don't need necessarily asset compliance and yeah. all this other you know, yeah. traditional database stuff. On the other hand, you hear a lot of people, you know, certainly in the Hadoop world, and you, and, and you heard Max this morning talking about. Essentially, making NoSQL more enterprise-like. Yeah. You know, you hear sure. things like backup and, and and so forth. So, is that just a matter of maturity? Uh, you don't need to go all the way, or or actually, is there an opportunity to go further? What, what do you see happening there? Are the old data warehouses a dinosaur? Um, I, you know, I, don't, I don't know, I think there's more options in the toolbox, right? There's more tools mm -hmm. in the toolbox, and I think the challenge for developers and DevOps guys today is to figure out what the right tool is for my the, job, the task at hand. If you're in a big org, you might have a specific project within that org. If you're a small startup, <laughs> you, you might have a particular workload you're tar targeting, whether it be social or gaming or something. So I think it's really important for folks to go out there, understand the tools in front of them, whether it's a column store, a document store, a relational database, uh, you know, you know, Informatica or, or, or you know, data warehousing and you know, big data, you know, Hadoop style stuff. They all have different uh, places in the in the data you know ecosystem, and to figure out what they do best and why to use them and how to use them, I think that's the new challenge. Not whether or not how you use Oracle, how you use any one of these. Yeah, tools. and and from a Rackspace's standpoint, they want to provide as many of those tools in the in the that's toolbox right. as possible. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and then let the let the peers and let the community do its thing to help people figure out what the right strategic fit is. Right, right. Absolutely. I mean, the real the real idea here is to let the developer develop and really focus on again building their you know their product using the right tool to build their product and we provide all of that back end scale and performance growth for them and, and simplicity yeah absolutely yeah. Yeah. that's exactly that's right. it i mean that's really the driver to mongo it seems to me is it just simplified everybody's lives and then as you say maybe it gets a bad rap and scale but it, as it matures it addresses that over time and it's it's challenges right you got to move faster than the market can move it appears that's right. it's doing so um, you, you mentioned now's a great time to be in database. Ten, ten years ago, database was really boring. You know, <laughs> yeah. companies getting bought up, IBM and, and Oracle sort of, and Microsoft dominate. And now this whole wave of NoSQL yeah. comes along. I mean, it's not just Mongo; it's many, many others. It's, it's, it's super and dynamic. And you know, what's great about the, you know the competitor, competitors in the field is that it's pushing. You're pushing the boundaries. You always have to push it forward. And that's why it, it is really a super exciting time. You're seeing all kinds of new technologies come out people doing really different things that are really exciting and changing how, how developers develop and what we can have as applications really. You know? All right, gentlemen, we're getting the hook here. This is a great right. discussion. I really, uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Really a pleasure meeting you. Appreciate thanks for having it, thanks. Me. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We're right back with our next guest. We're live in New York City at the MongoDB days. This is theCUBE.